what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. What is a prayer altar? Number one, a prayer altar is a place where the Christian interacts with the Spirit of God. The prayer altar is a place where the Christian interacts with the Spirit of God. Now maybe by next week we'll now go into the details of things like place. Why it is important to have a unique place. When you read about Jesus, the Bible says he will withdraw himself. Why did he not just stay where the, the disciples were to pray? He will go to certain places. He made a habit of it. Because there's something about having a consistent place for interaction between your spirit and the spirit of God. That's the prayer altar. Number two, a prayer altar is a time a time you sacrifice to commune with God. So first of all, it's a place. Secondly, it's a time you sacrifice to commune with God. The prayer altar. is a time you sacrifice to commune with God. Number three, the prayer altar is a commitment that you make. It's a commitment that you make to be a portal for the expression of the will of God. A commitment that you make to be a portal for, an ex for the expression of the will of God. That's what the prayer altar is. So it's a time, it's a place, and it's a commitment. We'll go further when we begin to deal with all of these issues. Now, if we understand the praying altar as it is, how is it that I will now be able to maximize this technology so that I am consistently enjoying the things? You know, like that scripture, when you get back home, if you have the opportunity of various translations, read Ephesians chapter 3 in the Amplified, 319 in the Amplified. Excuse me. And see, let hunger generate in your heart. Let it be that you become like the disciples. That you see something beyond working miracles, beyond becoming uh, a, a general of revival. That's not the whole essence of why we pray long. We pray long because there is much that the Christian can become in the hand of God that we are not enjoying. If you have a living prayer altar, you will know God. There's a level of intimacy you will have for, with God. You can't describe it with words. Anybody that has experienced that thing before, I tell you the truth, when they lose it, they weep. When you are enjoying God so much that the minute you show up at your prayer place, he's already there. I've shared with you, there was a time I was, I was on the road. On the road. I didn't know I was skipping like this. I'm not exaggerating. I didn't know. I had workman in my ear. I was listening to a message. My spirit had left. When you have a living prayer altar, your transition between the realms is seamless. You will not even know when you are still here and when you are in the realm where God dwells. You can't tell the difference. It's seamless. When you are operating like that, you can be in a crowd. Eh? And you are not with them. You are not with them. You are not with them. I used to enter buses that are noisy. And they are playing boo, 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 boo. I will just shut my eyes. And I will leave. And I'm not exaggerating. I, I will be there bodily. But my spirit will be having intercourse with God. That's why when I heard Apostle teach. That it was in Moluwe. As noisy as Moluwe is. That he was having deep encounters. I understood it. 
Because the noise from outside will not be able to drown the loudness of the still small voice in your spirit. It's not a shout, but there's a way it quiets your spirit that you lose a sense of your natural environment. It's seamless. Seamless. And the whole key is that you have an altar that is alive. It's alive. And it was when God was teaching Aaron that he showed us what a living altar is. He says you should have burned incense on the altar of incense morning and night. That the fire must never go out. So a living altar is measured, measured by the consistency of prayer fire. The fire must never go out. It must consistently be producing incense. Is there in the Bible? That is what Paul was now describing in Hebrews. Okay, let's look at the two scriptures. Let's look at the two scriptures. Let's first of all look at the Old Testament. So let's see Exodus 30, verse 7 to 8. Exodus 30, verse 7 to 8. Exodus 30, verse 7 to 8. I will just lay foundation. I have only about nine minutes left. As I'm not seeing the clock, it's not helping me. Exodus 30, verse 7 to 8. It says, Aaron shall burn on it sweet incense every morning. When he tends the lamp, he shall burn incense on it. Eight. And when Aaron lights the lamps at twilight, he shall burn incense on it, a perpetual incense before the Lord. How? Throughout your generations. Throughout your generations. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Hebrews chapter 5. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Verse 8, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So you see, Go back to the next verse, to the previous verse, 7. He offered up what? Prayers and supplications. He offered it up. God told Aaron that he must come and keep the fire on the altar of incense burning. That it must be a perpetual incense, a perpetual offering. Incense must be rising consistently. So if we look at the life of Jesus, we can tell the kind of sacrifices we are supposed to be offering on our altar. Remember, the altar is a place of interaction, it's a place of sacrifice, and then it's a place of, what is it now? Huh? It's a place of divine favor and assistance. And how that is measured is that the incense rises. To please the Lord. So what kind of sacrifices do we offer? Let me close there for tonight. Because tonight is introduction. Because if you look at the altar now. You will see the infrastructure. Noah was the first priest. That you see there. At the, at the physical altar. You see Noah at the altar. As the priest of that altar. So you have the priest. You have the altar. You have the sacrifice. And then you have the one to whom the altar is raised. So even in the New Testament, the Bible says, I think it's 1 Peter 2.5, that we all are being built up into a spiritual house to offer what? To offer what? Spiritual sacrifices, that's it. 1 Peter 2.5. We are all built, as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a what? Holy priesthood to offer up what? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through who? Jesus Christ. So it means that every one of us are supposed to be offering spiritual sacrifices. Once we have dedicated a place, and then we begin to offer the sacrifices of our time, there are other things that you are supposed to offer. And one of those sacrifices is that you are going to offer the incense of prayer. Consistent prayer. Consistent prayer. Like Ovie was saying, a prayer altar is not a prayer altar. If there is no praying going on, is praying 
that classifies it as a prayer altar. So the praying must be perpetual. That's what he was saying to Aaron. The incense must never go out. What else did Jesus offer? Go to Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7. What else did Jesus offer? He offered 7, 7. Of prayers and supplications. And how did he offer it? He says, with vehement cries and tears. So at the altar of prayer, as you offer a prayer, as you continue to offer up the incense of consistent prayer, you must also offer up the sacrifice of yourself. The sacrifice of yourself. If the sacrifice of yourself on the altar is not without blemish, the incense that you will raise will stink. Let me say that again. If the sacrifice of yourself that you offer on the altar, remember Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living what? So as a priest, you are the priest in the New Testament, you are the altar, you are the sacrifice, you are the temple. Unlike in the Old Testament where you had priest, temple, sacrifice, altar, different. In the New Testament, you are the priest, you are the altar, you are the sacrifice, you are the temple. Now, if you as the sacrifice is not a sacrifice without blemish, what kind of animals did Noah offer? Clean birds. Clean animals. So if you lie on that altar, because remember, you offer the sacrifice of your time. Hmm? But in offering the sacrifice of your time, you must offer yourself first. Now here I am, Lord. I'm making a commitment that I will stand with you in prayer for my territory, for my family, for the kingdom. And you put yourself on the altar as a sacrifice. Saying, Lord, let my life become a potter so that your will will be established in my generation. If the sacrifice of yourself is not a clean animal, is not a clean bird, what you will raise from that altar will be a stench. And remember, if it is not a sweet-smelling savour, there is no favour and there is no divine assistance. This is why many people are praying, but they can't move the hand of God. They are offering incense, but it's ascending from here as a stinking, smelling odor. 